Hello friends, welcome to the next digital signature scheme which we have to learn about is LGAMEL. Now this LGAMEL algorithm we have already seen when we have studied about the crypto systems and the algorithm which we have studied in the crypto system was also depending upon the computing the difficulty of computing for the discrete logarithms so here also the LGAMEL digital signature scheme is based on the difficulty of computing discrete logarithms it was described by Tahir LGAMEL in year 1984 the LGAMEL scheme here allows that a verifier can confirm the authenticity of a message M sent by the signer who is signing the message that is the sender who is signing the message sent to him over an insecure channel if the channel is an insecure one then also the receiver should receive the proper message the receiver should receive the secured message and then receiver should verify the message that whatever has been sent by the sender is properly signed and properly encrypted or not so the LGAMEL digital signature scheme here is again being used to implementation of the signature and to verify the signature. So how the digital signature focuses on is like the signature variant of LGAMEL uh, is related to the DH that is the Hellman. So it uses exponentiation of the finite Dalius field which is nothing but the where we can have the finite numbers where we can have the finite prime numbers and security based difficulty lies on computing of the discrete logarithms as in the edge it uses private key pair for encryption for that is for the signing and it uses the public key for the verification that is for decryption process here each user generates their own key pairs they do choose their secret keys here if you take xa as a secret key then the condition of finalizing the value of xa should be greater than one and should be less than q minus one and then we have to compute the public key value and the public key here is denoted by y of a which is then computed by using this equation of y of a is equals to a to the power of x of a mod of q here guys the value of q then be considered as any prime number and therefore it is said here that it is related to a finite galler's field how the key generation takes place the process is exactly same as the one which we used in the LGAMEL crypto system and in the LGAMEL digital signature scheme the public key consists of e1 e2 and the p and the private key is only the D. So here is how the signature process. First, if a sender has to sign a message which he sends he for which he is sending for a receiver. So here we have taken the example of the Alice and Bob, where Alice Alice is considered as the sender who is then signing a message for the receiver who is here considered as a Bob. So when Alice signs the message. He has to compute the hash functionality on it and for implementation of the hashed uh, value here we have to then select whatever the value of hash function is coming that value of hash function so it should be greater than or equal to zero and should be less than or equal to q minus one then the sender chooses one secret random integer that is a k and the value of k then should be greater than one and should be less than the value of q minus 1 where the gcd of k and q minus 1 should be 1 then sender has to compute the key s1 that is s1 here is considered as a to the power of k mod of q and k inverse is also needed to compute the value of s2 is then again find out and to finding out the value of s2 this is the equation given which is then utilizing the inverse of k 
m minus x of a where we are then utilizing the value of s1 to find the value of s2 mod of q minus 1 and then the signature which we has uh, which we are generating using the LGAML digital signature scheme comprises of two parameters that is of s1 and s2 so whatever the signature of the plain text message we will be then generating will be having two values that is of s1 and s2 then the bob or any user b who is here considered as the receiver can verify the signature and for verification of the signature the receiver or the user b has to compute the values of v1 and v2 for calculating the value of v1 the formula is a to the power of m mod of q and for calculating the value of v2 the formula is y of a to the power of s1 s1 to the power of s2 mod of q and then at the receiver's end receiver have to then verify the values of v1 and v2 if both of the values comes to be equal then the signature is a valid signature and this way the LGAML provides the validity of the signature to the receiver with the LGAML encryption the global elements of the LGAML digital signatures are the prime numbers that is q and a as i told you that it is finite values so we will be then have to find the values of a prime numbers q and a which is also then considered here the a the value of a is considered as a primitive root of q then user a needs to generate a private and a public key pair for finalizing or for finding the values of the private and the public key pair these are the following functions in the previous slide also we have seen these values that x a needs to be find out then we have to find the values of y a and then the private key then here is considered as x a and the public key is considered as these three parameters and then to sign we just have to again implement all these functionalities i think the slide is repeated here then this is the verification now guys you can see here that any user b can verify the signature and can verify and that verification can be done by using this method of finding finding the values of v1 and v2 and then comparing them whether the both of whether both of the values are same or not so this is the equation which we can then solve and then here we are having the value of v2 as y a to the power of s1 s1 to the power of s2 mod of q which we can then generalize and we can then equate it to the value of v1 which we has here as v1 is equals to a to the power of m mod of q so like if you get a question in the exam to compute or to prove that the value of v1 can become it is the other way around that the value of v2 we can compute it as the value of v1 then these are the steps to then generalize or to find out or to prove that the value of v2 can or value of v2 is the value of v1 and thus the signer has signed the message and thus the receiver has received the message and verified the message by verifying these two values as the equal values this is uh, just an example which we can consider here as two prime numbers that is 19 and 10 where a here the value of a is considered as the primitive root of the value of q as 19 alice has to compute her keys that is the private and the public keys so uh, Alice, the sender is choosing the value of x a. We have to find. We have to then keep in mind the uh, equation, and we have to keep in mind the condition also, wherein the value of x of a should be greater than one and should be less than the value of q minus one. That means the value of x of a should be a prime also, and it should be less than the value of nineteen. And then after finding the value of x of a, we have to compute the value of y of a by keeping the values in the given formula. 
Thus, we can, then we can then compute the value of y of a as 4. Alice then has to sign the message. And for signing the message, it has the hash functionalities to be utilized. And here, the hash function has been utilized and the value of small m has been then computed as 4. Then choosing the random value of k, which needs to be fulfilling this condition of the value of gcd of q minus 1 and k should be 1. And thus we get, we can compute the value of s1, that is a to the power of 5, a, that is a to the power of k mod of 19, that is mod of q, which then gives you the value of s1. Uh, and also we have to then find the value of s2 by utilizing the value of s1, which then gives you the value of s2 as 11. So we get a pair of signature having the values 3 and 4, that is s1 and s2. And then user b, that is the receiver, has to verify the signature. And for the verification of the signature, the user then has to find the values of v1 and v2, which then needs to be equal. So this is the general idea behind the Elgamel crypto system, wherein the two signature parameters needs to be executed by implementing their functionalities and by implementing the equations. And here we can see that the signing of the plain text message is being taken place the here the alice's public key is being used for signing of the messages that is e1 e2 and then again the signing of the message is being taking place and we are finding the, the two parameters that is s1 and s2 which will then give you the complete signature having two parameters so the values of s1 and s2 needs to be finalized and when it is being received at the receiver's end receiver then has to verify it and for verification of the signature receiver then have to finalize or then have to find the values of v1 and v2 and when the values of v1 and v2 becomes equal or they have they comes as equal then we can very well said that the signature is verified at the receiver's end. This is the way the verification of the signature takes place. Signing is being taking place here with the private key. We can see that the signer is Alice using the private key for finalizing the value of S1 and then using the value of s1 we are then finalizing or when we are then computing the value of s2 and this signature is then received at the receiver's end then verify verifying step is being taken place where for the verification the bob who is the receiver is then utilizing the public key pair of the sender that is e1 e2 and the value of p are then used for Verifying the signature and for verification send receiver will then have to find the values of v1 and v2 And if the values of v1 and v2 comes to be equal Then the receiver can very well said that the verification of the signature is the valid one and thus the receiver can accept the signature Also, the receiver can accept the message. So this is the acceptance step of the plain text after verifying the signature at the receiver's end. Now the problems which the Elgamel digital signature scheme can face is that number which is being generated, which is being taken. So the prime number P which is then assumed needs to be very large to guarantee that the discrete log problems is interactable in ZP that is the complete domain wherein we have to find the discrete logarithmic problems. The recommendation is the p, the value of p, should be of at least 1024 bits. This could make a signature as large as 204 bit, 48 bits. And to reduce the size of the signature, a Schnorr signature scheme was then proposed, which is then considered as the new scheme. And that scheme is also based upon the similar functionalities as that of the Elgamel. But then the only thing which was 
modified in the schnorr is the reduced signature size and the problem which was then faced by the algorithm algamil signature uh, signature process was then removed or when we can say that it was then overcome by the schnorr by pr proposing a new method of digital signature which then produces reduced size of the signature how the forgery can take place in algamil is like uh, here only one mode of forgery can uh, be there that is a key and uh, in this any intruder here we have taken an example of e has the two kinds of forgery which can be then done on the key and those are like uh, the intruder has suppose a predefined message m then she needs to forge alice's signature on it a must or the intruder must find two valid signatures that is s1 and s2 for this message and this is called the selective forgery Eve must be able to find three random values that is M predefined message the values of S1 and S2 such that the last two are the signatures of the first one that means the parameters which we need for creating the signatures are S1 and S2 and whoever the intruder or he whoever the forged person is that forged person has to then find out the values of the predefined message m and the two parameters of the signature that is s1 and s2 and this is the only way the forgery can happen on the algamil digital signature scheme thank you guys i just hope that you might have got the concept of another digital signature scheme that is called as the algamil digital signature scheme thank you